Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a early impression video of a Atar, and it's actually from a house that I have not done a review on the channel yet. It's from a house called Kashti, K-A-S-H-T-I, and um, so this is what the actual logo looks like, Kashti, uh, with the strange looking T, and um, that's their little symbol right there, the flower, and today we're going to talk about a fragrance called Imritha Bindu. Imritha Bindu. Uh, and so this is an Atar. So uh, this is two and a half grams for 135 US dollars, I believe. But first, let's talk a little bit about the brand because the brand of Kashti is a newer house. I believe that this gentleman um, has only been blending for a couple years. Uh, Divyam is his name, and I believe he's part of the Indian circle. So I've got, I've talked about a lot of Indian brands lately, things like Heaven Duft, uh, Dixit and Zach, Perito Moreno. Um, there's another one, ah, Sherwood, of course, Sherwood is uh, probably my favorite Indian brand, to be honest with you. And um, now we have Kashti. So this is what maybe sets this brand a little bit apart is they're 100% natural. So everything is 100% natural. There's no synthetics used in any of the fragrances, either the pure oils or he sent me probably something like five different sprays. They come actually in a pretty cool little leather pouch that is nice to carry decants in. Uh, and so it's engraved with the name of the house and it says Ocean of Scents. Uh, and like this one in particular is Rose Oud. So maybe I'll do a live stream where we can talk about like all five of these sprayable perfumes. But even these are 100% natural. So natural is kind of his thing. Um, and so I have been sitting on these for months, haven't talked about them on the channel yet. And he's been very patiently waiting for me to at least do a video on one. So I figured I would take one that I thought would be a good starting point. And the reason I wanted to start with this one is it's one of the cheaper Atars. There, there are some higher priced Atars that are closer to 180, 190, I believe, uh, from memory. But one thing about this brand that's going to hold him back a little bit is he doesn't have a website yet, I don't believe. I think he's still working on a website. So very similar, like with uh, Sherwood, you're going to have to contact him on Instagram and tell him what you want and he'll ship it to you and you can pay, it, pay him for him that way. Um, and, and so this fragrance we're going to talk about today, there's a couple reasons that I wanted to start with this house or start with this particular offering. And I would say that um, it's one of the simple, one of, it's a very simple composition, okay? So this is, for me, like for somebody who wants to try to understand what natural smelling musks and ambergris and rose and oud smells like, this is a fantastic starting point. Uh, and we'll talk about some of kind of the pros and cons of that, but the note listing is very simple. It's literally ambergris, musk, rose, tobacco, Oud. Now, th that's that's actually the note listing according to Parfumo. Ambergris, musk, rose, and tobacco. But there is a clear sandalwood and oud composition to this as well. Uh, I think those should be added as notes, in, in my opinion. And um, so I'm wearing it today. I've got a eight-hour dry down here and about maybe a two or three-hour dry down on this hand. So I could re-experience the opening. Um, and so I'll tell you that, um, uh, I, this is one that is a great starter Atar is, is one of the best ways for, for me to describe it. And at the price, because $135 for two and a half grams, it's a, it's a lot of juice for 135 bucks. So one of the reasons that I want to start with this is everything is getting so expensive nowadays. And that is a topic that you just cannot avoid. Perfume prices are getting so exorbitantly expensive that is just cutting a lot of people out. And I'm pretty sure the big houses, even though they won't admit it, their sales are slumping. Uh, people are not giving Dior $400 for the Privés or MFKs $380 or, you know, uh, Louis Vuitton $300 plus for their fragrances. Or it's just the prices have gotten so outrageous. Guerlain did all of those um, sort of uh, Le Labo-like ingredients where it was like, vanilla one and there was a number after it uh rose 28 or something and they and they did them in like pure x-ray or something and they were insanely expensive 475 bucks or something so Guerlain's out of their mind but all perfume prices are getting to be 
outrageous. And, and so I think a lot of folks are beginning to turn to other sources to enjoy um, smelling things, enjoy fragrance in a different way than just going down to their local Macy's and buying something. So this is one example of, of that. So uh, it uses real musk, real oud, real ambergris, and a beautiful sandalwood. The sandalwood here smells very natural. You can smell it. It almost feels like it's kind of distilled in sandalwood. So whenever I talked about the history of Atar collection by Arise the Doré, there's an interview with Russian Adam where he talks about how distillation done into the sandalwood oil in sort of these ancient Atar, Indian Atar type methods is completely different from the way modern perfumery is blended by a perfumer, right? Uh, and, and so this smells almost more like you're smelling an ancient Atar method. Uh, the ingredients smell uh, natural, they smell crisp, they smell clean. And one thing that I will tell you is if you're trying to study the ingredients, so if you're buying this and going, okay, I'm getting a fragrance that is going to be very wearable, the ingredients smell very natural, you know, the sandalwood is is uh, clearly a natural sandalwood. You're not smelling a big javanol punch to the face. It's not that rip the inside of your nostrils out type sandalwood, right? One thing I will tell you, though, is that um, the brand is not going to blow you away in the same way that uh, Sultan Pasha's Atars will blow you away, for example. And we'll talk a little bit about maybe the pros and cons of that. I think Sultan Pasha is like the maestro of Atars for me personally. If I was going to give my hard-earned money to a brand for Atars, it would be uh, Sultan Pasha, personally, from what I've smelled. But, however, there's pros and cons of that because Sultan Pasha's fragrances are double or triple what we're going to talk about with Kashti. So that's why I said I think it's maybe like a early foot in the door or if you wanted to get an Atar but you didn't want to spend as much on a Sultan Pasha, a brand like Kashti may be something to consider. So it's a cost-effective way. To start is kind of is kind of the way that I would I would uh, mention it. The natural ingredients are great, but they're not going to be the eye popping, uh, rare, uh, just insanely expensive ingredients that you'll find in some of the Sultan Pasha or Ensar Atars or Ouds or stuff like that. So when you first put this on, it's funny. Um, if you first put it on and you don't like it and you think you've made a mistake, let it settle. Let it kind of really work with your skin and let it bloom uh, and blossom because it really does blossom beautifully on the skin eventually. And um, the musk and the sandalwood base literally make this fragrance feel like you're just like walking in a bounce house. You know, that weightless feeling um, where each step you take makes you feel lighter uh, than air. Like if you've seen ast astronauts kind of jumping up and down on the moon and they feel like they're just so light, uh, that is how this fragrance feels as, as you wear it. The ingredients come across as... Uh, as very airy and pillowy, and the musk come across as very pillowy and soft. Uh, now, there is a note in here that makes it, I think, lean slightly more masculine than it would be if it didn't have this note, and that's the note of tobacco. And tobacco can sometimes give this very dry, hay-like smell. Here, it comes off as, as feeling very coarse within the fragrance, because everything in this fragrance, when you wear it, and if you take a look, you can kind of see the little particles. Um, I don't know if those are musk grains. I don't know if they're bits of tobacco. I don't know if they're little pieces of ambergris in there. I have no idea. But you can see the little pieces in the oil. Um, the rose is beautiful as well. It's a traditional rose oud musk. Um, but um, the, the tobacco is almost a little bit like the secret ingredient in here because tobacco... I said this was a very classic, classic and easy to kind of understand Atar, right? There's very little, um, it's not flashy, it's not fancy, okay? Uh, it just kind of gives you a high quality, natural, real ingredients in a very traditional method. Ambergris, musk, rose, uh, oud, sandalwood, are, are, nothing is going to jump out as absolutely insane, right? None of those ingredients are off the wall crazy. But the tobacco note in here adds this coarseness to it, almost like, you know, an unshaved beard for a couple days, right? It just kind of has this gristle to it. And um, this masculine texture is a good way to put it. And so otherwise, I think the fragrance would feel very androgynous. I still think this would be easy for anyone to wear, male, male or female. 
but the tobacco just gives it a slight hint to the masculine side. Maybe like, you know, 55% masculine, 60% masculine, 40% feminine, something like that. Um, and I like that. I like the little bit of twist that the tobacco gives in here. Um, and I love tobacco when it isn't cut with tonka. So much tobacco nowadays is cut with that tonka. So smelling the tobacco, mixing with the ambergris, the real ambergris, um, which ambergris uh, adds this almost like sparkle to the fragrance, right? And so there's this uh, sparkle that the ambergris adds. There's this contrast. And you get a little bit of dirtiness, but I want to emphasize that little bit. Uh, the oud here... Maybe that's one of the reasons that it's not listed as a note in Parfumo, because um, the oud here is not front and center. It's not an animalic oud. Even, you know, some of the ouds that are not animalic, you can smell it and you get other facets. You get the resinous medicinal facets. You get the liqueur, like you're painting a room facets. You get the bar, you get all these different facets, the barnyard facets, um, uh, the earthy facets, the woody facets. And here, the oud really comes across as hanging out in the background, you know, and maybe that's one of the reasons why it's not actually listed as a uh, note in here. The ambergris, musk, rose, and tobacco are highlighted, but I think the sandalwood, out of the sandalwood and the oud, the two notes that are not listed, the sandalwood is much more prominent because it really feels like everything is being distilled through the sandalwood in, in, in it, or like macerated in sandalwood. It really feels that way to my nose. And the sandalwood is very smooth. If you smelled real sandalwood, I don't know what type of sandalwood this is. I have no clue. I would assume probably Indian sandalwood since he's in India. Uh, but I don't know whether it's Mysore or just some other strand of Indian sandalwood. I have no idea. But, um, you know, the, uh, the, the ambergris adds a little bit of that sparkle to it. And the oud adds just a little bit of that dirtiness. A little bit. And sometimes I wish that oud was turned up a little bit more. But um, I think this release was supposed to be a very traditional up and down proper you know technically fundamentally sound atar um easy to wear a good first step in the door it's one of the reasons i wanted to review it first on the channel when we're talking about kashti as a brand um you know for me i think this is a great starter atar like someone who really wants to get into natural atars or natural perfumery but they don't want to go spend $1,000 on an Ensar or something like that, or they don't want to go spend 500 bucks on a Sultan Pasha or whatever it is. Um, they want to get something a little bit cheaper and uh, maybe just more easy to wrap their head around at first. This is a great step one, you know, um, and, uh, you know, you have to get to page one to get to page two, right? So that's a little bit of the way I feel about Amritha Bindu. Now, Amritha Bindu... Um, the name means something, and I forgot what the what it meant. Um, hang on, let me see if I can remember what the name is. Kashti Amritha Bindu. It means drop of nectar. Interestingly enough, it means drop of nectar, um, and and so that's kind of a good, uh, I guess, way to put it as well because. It, it's kind of like a drop of an of a nectar of an atar. Uh, and so, you know, you get that atar. Um, there are other notes that uh, some folks have said that they picked out, which I'm not getting as much. So I'll stick to kind of the basics. But um, what I will just re-emphasize here is the downside is with all these beautiful natural ingredients, they don't wow me. Okay, I've smelled this before. I've smelled this a lot before, actually, especially over the last couple years as I've got to really know the ingredients themselves. I've been very blessed to smell some of the actual sandalwoods and ouds and musks and all that stuff. Russian Adam sent me a whole almost like 50 ingredient. There's a whole uh, if you go to the Russian, if you go to the Arij Ladore playlist, you'll see the uh, ingredient unboxing where I went through each and every ingredient. Um, and Russian Adam and I did the same thing on one of the live streams. We talked about each and every ingredient he sent me. And um, for me, this is a take on natural perfumery. And it's it's beautiful, but it doesn't wow me. That's, that's the biggest thing to kind of get across. It's very fundamental. I, and I don't know what quality of ingredients that he's using. Because if you've heard me review... Malik Al Taif. If you watched my Ariz Ladore Malik Al Taif review, for example, I talk about how that is a royal grade 
of Taif Rose, right? There's all these different grades. It's not just give me Taif Rose. There's different grades that you can buy, just like there's different grades of oud. There's different grades of sandalwood. So when you're dealing with natural perfumery, there's so many more variables than, you know, you're just uh, then dealing with, let's say, a uh, retail brand, right? Because most of the retail brands use similar ingredients from similar oil houses and stuff like that. Um, and, and so you may have more continuity. Everything is more, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's more economies of scale and similarities and, and stuff like that. Whereas with some of the natural brands, you can have some huge variances. Some oud could be over here. Some rose could be over there. It, it, it should just be all over the place. So I don't know the quality of the materials that are being used in here. Um, they seem to me to be good quality. I don't know if they're the best of the best of the best, but I think they're good quality. Um, I don't think they're poor, but I don't think they're the best either is, is my two cents, but it does smell very natural. Um, but it's not going to wow you. So again, if you're going for, I showed this earlier, this Ensar Rose. So I'll just use this as an example, right? So I reviewed Ensar Rose on the channel. And if you would like a kind of, uh, intro into Atars, go watch my review on, uh, Ensar on, on just any of the Sultan Pashas. There's an entire Sultan Pasha playlist. Sultan Pasha also came on my channel and did an interview. So, you know, he gave his thoughts for an hour or two. You can go check that out. That was an amazing interview that he did with us. But like, this is one such example. So this is Ensar Rose and it's named him Ensar Rose because, um, you'll get this beautiful white rose Alba. And, and when the white rose kind of blooms in Ensar Rose, it is like, unbelievable to me. It's so beautiful and captivating and alluring and all of those kind of words come to mind. And then on top of it, there is a very rare oud in here that's distilled by Ansar called Oud Yunus, uh, which is a rare Hindi oud. And so those type of high-end rare ingredients you're not going to find, I don't think, in Kashtis. Um, that is my initial assessment. Now, I could be wrong down the road. He could end up turning and going towards that. But from what I've smelled, is it 100% natural? Yes. Is it going to have the rare Ensar Oud in here? No. But you're going to pay double and triple for the quality of Sultan Pasha. Uh, so that's kind of the other side of things. And especially nowadays with everything so expensive and most people being on some sort of a budget, it's good to know these kind of brands are out there. So now the price of Ensar Rose, just to give you an example, three grams is $384.51. We like to be precise here at Channel Ram. So um, here, two and a half grams is so half a gram less is a half a gram less is um, $135. So you can kind of see the difference right there. So it doesn't have the flash, it doesn't have the champagne, it doesn't have the pizzazz, doesn't have the fireworks of some of the rare Sultan Pashas or Ansars or stuff like that. But I think it's a good entry into Atars and um, artisanal perfumery. And I, he ships worldwide, no problem. Um, but I don't know what the shipping cost is because I didn't pay for this. This was actually a gift from, from the brand. All of this was a gift. He, he sent this to me. Uh, this along with a couple of these Atars, which I'll be kind of talking about. I think, it's, um, I think it's good to talk about these brands. I wish he had a website. Uh, Kashti and Sherwood need websites. They absolutely need to set up a website. I know Prakar Gupta is working on that and hopefully... Divyam is kind of doing the same thing. Um, the other thing I'll mention, into the dry down of this particular fragrance, I said I wasn't going to shout out any other ingredients that are not listed in here, but I do get this very strange, almost citric smelling vetiver in the dry down. Um, I mean, it's clear as day on in the eight or nine hour dry down. Clear as day, that um, citric, fresh, almost like you're smelling... The dry down of this almost feels like you're smelling the top notes of a vetiver fragrance. It's so strange. I like it. I like what it kind of turns into, but but going from the tobacco and rose and musk and ambergris and, and the sparkly ambergris and, sa and the sandalwood to this green, I don't know where the green is coming from. Maybe it, there, it just dries down to something green smelling that is giving me vetiver vibes or reminiscence of a vetiver, a ghost vetiver note, if you will. Um, but there's definitely something green into the dry down, interestingly enough. So 
anyways, I just wanted to do like an early impression on the brand. I've had these for months and I haven't done one. Uh, and so I wanted to give the brand a little bit of its flowers and a little bit of a shout out. Thank you, Divyam, for uh, sending this along. Maybe I'll do like a Kashti live stream one day where uh, we'll talk about all five of these and, um, you know, just talk a little bit more about the brand. So, uh, yes, you do have to reach out to them on Instagram again. It's Kashti, K-A-S-H-T-I. So you can, um, you can reach out to them and he can give you kind of a pricing list. None of them are outrageously priced. But, um, but yeah, so if you're into artisanal perfumery, definitely a brand that I think, um, that I think you should check out. You know, if you're into the real musks, the real ouds, the real rose oils and all that good stuff, check out, check out Kashti. Um, so that's kind of my initial impression. If anyone has experience with the brand, do let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts as always. So cheers guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.